Hi, welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Today we are going to be exploring our views on masculinity and femininity. And uh, should be good stuff. Roger will be here with us in just a second. Hi. Um, it's been great doing these and I want to like honor and thank you all for showing up on a regular basis. It's great. And now, so hello. Hi. So it should be interesting. I know. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. good. Nice to be here. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, you made it. So, exploring <laughs> our views on masculinity and femininity, correct? That's correct. Yay. I'd like uh, many people joined yet. Yes, a few are on. Yep, they're coming in right now. Okay. So while you're sitting here listening, you can explore your own, feel out your own views toward uh, the opposite gender. <laughs> or, or our own. Perhaps. Gender. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's that? I said exploring also how we feel about, like in my case, femininity, right? And what yes. it really feels like to us. It's overlooked or hidden a lot nowadays, especially for uh, professional women competing in the uh, business world and such. So oftentimes rejected. So. Well, yeah, I know that for me personally, sometimes it was like, if feeling soft felt weak, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Just like for guys. I mean, if you take on, uh, uh, tend to sway toward the masculine energies, you're going to adapt uh, many of those qualities. So yes, it would, it would be felt as a weakness to you. So very, very fascinating. What are you smiling about? <laughs> <laughs> so where do we, uh, the reason I want to talk about this a little bit was because of my own experience issues around, um, feminine energies and, uh, what we see a lot of in energy work itself. Um, pretty much everyone has issues around it and may not be aware of it, um, often forming, of course, uh, around our parental uh, family uh, ex early experiences, <clears throat> stepping into duality, seeing men and women as different, starting to stereotype them, and then um, traumas and all that we might go through uh, with the other gender, perhaps, through our lives. So. Uh, we set up all kinds of protections and have distorted perspectives that interfere with our entire life experience, right? Yes. So have to get back to a balance of those things, which is often started in internally. Uh, we've done that through energy work. A person could probably do that on themselves as well. <clears throat> There's a lot of information out there, but um, talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Talking about my own experiences, uh, I'll start out really young, but just very briefly. I was always uh, uh, very afraid of women, um, <clears throat> but they had a, a power over me because there's a natural desire to be with one. All right. But so, also that fear, didn't that fear also give that, give that um, power fuel, right? There was a trigger there. Uh, Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But that turned into a um, uh, disdain, actually, toward women after a while because of that power that they had, right? It was something out of my control. Um, they they stood to make the choices and such. Uh, so and that became a part of my um, issues. And then, of course, uh, I went into the codependency and all and... Uh, shifted my views to a lot of negative about women so I could avoid a uh, relationship. It gave me a reason to stay away from them, yeah. right? But the natural desires uh, uh, stayed there. I, I, I could be in full disdain uh, with women, but if one came up and looked at me right and said the right word and we were supposed to date, well, I would turn to mush. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it would go for a while, but... Um, uh, 
So things were really distorted. And it also, and, um, with that, did you also find that, just putting in perspective, because we have the divine masculine and divine feminine in us, right? We, we have both right. energies. And did you find that with the disdain for femininity, you also had the disdain for masculinity because of the fear you had created in your space, right? Yeah, I, uh, disdain toward the roles I was supposed to play. Yeah. Yes, because I didn't seem to have that uh, part in me as well. And of course, that's where the drive, part of the drive came <clears throat> to uh, pursue, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. So there were parts of me that I just wanted to eliminate. If I could have took something back then to uh, eliminate the desire for a relationship, perhaps, I probably would have neutralized it. <laughs> and uh, spend my time fishing or something. It would have it would have seen uh, been much simpler. Yeah. Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, in your own experience, uh, I mean, and also we go through the things you know, the traumas we were talking about could be in dating or uh, just uncomfortable situations, uh, say sexual or whatever, where we we're judged or something and. Uh, these can be very devastating, right? Yeah. Create trauma for guys as well, uh, depending on what happens. But um, well, I mean, in my own personal experience, and and um, you know this about me, coming from some pretty pretty intense trauma early on in my life, right, and into later years, there was definitely it was interesting this a, a disdain and fear of masculinity, right? but also a this wanting to be accepted and be pleased in that, right? And then yes. also a fear of ever being weak in a situation that I could not control or, so my view of femininity was that I had to like be this strong person right and not let anybody in number one but also physically strong so that i could protect myself right right so it was a very like interesting view when that when i be, like just physically took on this like strength where really if i be, became more fluid and soft and flowing i didn't have to participate in that structure anymore at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. strong boundaries and all and uh mm -hmm. Uh, uh, love of self, right? Mm -hmm. Back to source, everything we need being within us. Yeah. It allows it to help you to stand your ground a lot more. Yeah. <clears throat> so you've done well at that, the physical. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little fierce when it gets at times, you know. <laughs> yes. So I was wondering if anybody... Um, it didn't mention that anyone could ask questions if they wanted to, if they find any distortions in their own life um, that you want to ask about or share. Yeah. Uh, or And also just share your views on femininity and masculinity and what that looks like for you and what that feels like, right? Yes. Like right now. I, I'm, a, I'm a little curious. I know we see it in the energy work a lot, but... Um, um, the women tending toward uh, more masculine to uh, compete in the business world, perhaps. Yeah. Um, anyone has done any work with that to align to the feminine energies, like outside, right? Afterwards, yeah. you have practices that uh, you do to realign to those energies. Help balance that out, right? Or right creative expression or something like that, you know? Yeah. Nobody's very talkative today, so. You no, know, just you and I. <laughs> no, there, there is a, that's a really good point because when we're in a strong business world and as a female, there's a, a need to, to if there feels like a need to be in control and handle things and get things done and be super task oriented, right? And not show any emotion and hold this space in order to be this high achiever, right? Mm -hmm. And 
somehow that definitely has to be balanced out or something goes cattywampus in our physical body, right? Yes. So Andrew says, as an astrologer, I view 12 different kinds of feminine energies and 12 different masculine. Cool. Have you written anything about that? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I would be curious to read something. Um, maybe if you get some time sometime, you could email me something. Yeah, Andrea, please. That would be awesome to write about that. Or right, Roger. I mean, and you could yes. go into a little bit of what um, what some feminine energies are. Do you want to do that? Well, uh, <clears throat> when we basically when we start working with them, we work with uh, Gaia, Divine Feminine from Earth. And then uh, the masculine would be like from the sun. So we bring bring both of those energies in. Um, sometimes uh, both at the same time, sometimes one and then the other and then merge them. But the um, this was very healing for me starting to work with the divine feminine uh, because I felt the uh, love. I started to learn again what love was like. Um, the feeling it is incredible and then uh, it started to shift things for me and then of course we go into deeper work when you start doing this if you bring in if you have um, resistances to feminine perhaps and you do the practice uh, in energy session your resistances will come up right mm -hmm. uh, right away they'll be triggered because you're feeling that uh, feminine energy so then these are the things that you have to start uh, processing or looking at or shifting perspectives on that happens during the sessions a lot um, typically and it's the same with masculine but um, there's a, mm, a lot of empowerment that's experienced during that when the two merge right so and this this stuff will go back to you start doing a work with the feminine energies and you could go back to uh, issues with mom um all kinds of things as you were raised all but. kinds of things yeah or mm -hmm. just or just how the structures are set up right as yeah. it goes into she did say we shouldn't look that there is only one kind of each no Every this is has divine yeah. feminine yes reception right. receptive qualities and divine masculine assertive qualities yes i'd say right. yeah what i was just going to go into i was going to read some stuff here that roger and i looked at earlier um and where some of the feminine energies are linked to, well, it goes into fertility, maternity, nurturing, softness, healing, wisdom, providing space, mystical beings, goddesses, the moon, the earth, water, our planet energy, Gaia. Uh, feminine energies typically express in behaviors such as nurturing, allowing, emoting, trusting, flowing, being creative, providing space, improving, adapting, and beautifying. Right, Roger? Yes. You want to go into the masculine as well? I do. I'm like folding up a bit. Uh, and male energies of consciousness, knowledge, strength, protection, direction, father, son, king, sage, warrior, powerful gods, the sun, fire, lightning, and our cosmic energy, Masculine energies typically express in behaviors such as controlling, being action-driven, and solution-oriented, directed, forward-pushing, competing, fighting, winning, wanting to be first, rationalizing, providing, protecting, and fixing. Any thoughts? So, <laughs> there was an interesting example one time I saw in an energy session that's a uh, a woman painting something, but then uh, the masculine was missing because there was a need to like hang the picture. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And she she was she says exactly right. She says that's right where I was at. So um, yeah. So the Andrew, uh, so wouldn't it be wonderful if each person had a marriage showing where both their inner feminine and masculine were joined? Oh, I love yeah. that idea. That's kind of what we do with yeah, the energy. Yeah, the merging, with but energy. actually consciously, like, 
going out in the wilderness, Roger, right? And connecting all mm -hmm. of those physical things and like saying out loud, you know, or having someone do it with you. I mean, we do do that in the energy sessions, but like how cool would it be for you to like, Roger, write out your little marriage certificate? <laughs> Sure, and it could bring in bring up our resistances to marriage if anyone has those. Yeah, that too, right? <laughs> Give yeah. you something to work on. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much we do, what we do though. Um, combine the two of them, merge the two of them, and then experience the power, <clears throat> the increased power from that place. Yeah, that is a that list is fantastic because it does actually like. I'm pretty good about shifting into masculine energies or feminine energies, right, Roger? Now in a in a much more uh, neutral way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's instead of like having it be triggered and something uh, happening, right? And and try and with yeah. force. Well, this is a you know kind of where where everybody or a lot of people are being headed to now the non duality. Yeah. Uh, um, role where where genders aren't um, seen so much separate, uh, right? We're seen as beings uh, with uh, one little heavier in one quality or the other. Yeah. Depending on what we came in with. Yeah. Right? So or where we're at, right? And, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The non-duality. I mean, this is, the, and you see the divine, masculine, feminine, and the Trinity actually in all of nature, but. It's everywhere you look. Everything has got um, everything with life behind it has both um, or all three parts. So the, the probably the, um, the separation and duality is probably the main place where we start becoming distorted. Um, you know, girls got to wear pink, boys got to wear blue. Um, this is your role. You got to fit into that. Um, each of us are assigned specific things, and then you have all the stereotypical stuff like um, uh, men are interested in only one thing, protect yourself, stay away from them. Uh, certain hair colors are more fun, and women are smarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so. and don't, you, can, you see it if you go to the park or somewhere and you, you see parents with their children, and it's, oh, don't cry to like the little boys, like man up, whatever, right? These, these Yeah. Phrases are and um, so then that spreads out into the rest of life, right? Yeah. Uh, the duality and separation. So we start seeing good and bad and setting up all our uh, walls and such like this. So the masculine and feminine is a good place to start the work, um, balancing those energies internally uh, because it can break down a lot of our duality uh, in the rest of life. We start internalizing these changes and then it'll uh, be reflected out into our life or we can start working with it out there. So I'm, I, and I'm curious, I know Andrea is able to write in, so um, I, I may ask her if she'll share in some of this. Um, one, Andrea, please, it would be really cool for you to write about the masculine and feminine with um, the signs like you mentioned earlier and we could do something with that, that'd be great. But also, Andrea or Roger, when your masculine or feminine energies are off balance or in the past, Roger, did you have any physical manifestation in your body that kind of warned you or triggered you that? Or do you feel things in your body, like maybe during a session when someone has those experiences, right? And they're working on their femininity. Well, for me, it, act, it comes in as um, <clears throat> inaction, stagnation, um, I may be feeling creative, but don't have any any masculine uh, to output it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, uh, with the feminine, of course, uh, the everything just drops off. I may get wrapped up in action stuff, uh, just doing things that have nothing to do with creativity or anything or softness. I'm um, experiencing, uh, paying attention to love and. Uh, you know, the important things in the day. So that part will get shut down. I just become very hard as well. Don't pay as much attention to people. Uh, perhaps if the feminine drops off, I'm not in my heart as much then. Yeah. 
I know so, also in my, like in my physical body, since, you know, I'm such a physical person and maybe I'm going through layers of stuff and some inner child stuff that might be bringing up some of the past trauma, right? Mm -hmm. where I will feel like that frustration or disconnect from masculinity on certain side, like a specific side of my body and in, and in areas of my body that I'm, because I'm so in tune with it now as well, like the inner child stuff might come up in my knee and as frustration, right? At masculinity yeah. or in my left hip at femininity with some other stuff that's working on being released, right? Um, and so I bring that up only because when people have my experience is that when I have stuff going on with my body, usually it's a manifestation of something being off balance somewhere else, right? Yes. And where those energies are linked. And so our body can really teach us a lot about that and our balance with masculine and femininity. Mm -hmm. I'm just, right? And, and you may feel the weakness. Balance. We see a lot of in the energy sessions, if a person needs uh, more feminine and we may see the entire uh, left side of the body being ignored, dragged behind, yeah. uh, perhaps feeling weak, uh, just droop down, right? Yeah. And lifeless, kind of. And it would be the same. Um, we see examples of extreme uh, or imbalance toward the masculine. That, mm -hmm. that side would be into control behaviors or... Uh, feel very powerful and tight, uh, perhaps things like this, yeah. yeah. So, and those things you could feel them as well in the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, if those ba energies are in balance, one side of your, or the other can be the entire side of the body, right? Not only specific points like your, uh, everybody experiences it different, but. Yes. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, we see it that way for sure. I was just curious if maybe someone had um, actually been able to relate physical manifestations in their body to where it was linked to masculine or femininity. You know, like I described right. about my inner, the inner child stuff on my knee, that, that just, it just pops in now, right? Um, how, if, if anyone had like, if, if Andrea or anyone out there has experienced that and had a trigger come up with that. Yeah whether it's judgment of self or anything, right? Yep. I got to say hi quickly to my f uh, friend, Mike, from Australia. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's like, what time is it there? It's in the morning. It's early. Yeah, it's about 12 hours difference, I think, right now. Yeah, so, but, yeah, your time. You. <clears throat> so, Ryan, so, I know that with the when we look at the collective right now and what's what's happening in the world a lot of this masculine and feminine is coming up right yes to really be worked with and and the light um shined on it um to be mm. balanced out and healed and it's showing up in patterns of would you say codependency and um controlling behaviors and things like that yeah all, all of the above and uh, the important word was balance yeah right yeah <laughs> so we've had kind of a distorted uh masculine running things for a while so and the feminine sort of being hidden or kept down so they both need to uh come into their right place right yeah of equality and uh, neutrality i see a new post yeah yes, I've seen a lot of allowing embracing have you heard did you hear that uh, yes yes i've been seeing a lot yeah. of allowing embracing of femininity showing up as blocks and issues with feminine cycle which is very true yeah, yeah. and intestinal problems are generally um from a feminine issue receiving too much judgment from the externalization it looks like can't read the rest of it um neither can i it's not moving yeah. Oops. It'll pop in. She's um, maybe she's still writing a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, well, with the moon, and especially like in the past, our our moon cycle, our feminine cycle, would be linked to the moon cycle, and and how that naturally works for us, right? 
Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a good point. The intestinal problems are generally from a feminine issue, receiving too much judgment from exter the external. Hmm. I've never thought about that, but I could see that. There's a lot of uh, women get projected upon in many ways. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of different issues that can come from that different types of projection, but um, the judgment, yeah, that would make sense. But, you know, <clears throat> that's learned in the energy work as well. You become, balance these energies out, learn to be in your heart with your higher power, and then the judgment just flies around you. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good, um, not that you need uh, really protection, but that's what it becomes, right? Yeah, naturally. It's in your own energies to the point where that stuff doesn't matter anymore. So I'm going to go back to like what's happening um, in the collective and the energies that are surrounding us right now. And, okay. and in your opinion, um, like I said, I, I, in my opinion, I feel like all of these things, oh uh, yeah, can't digest things that come from outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you don't really want to <laughs> a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. Um, as these things are being, I'm going to say bombarded right in front of us, right? Every day, if we're paying attention to that in the news and Twitter and all of that stuff, right? Uh, if I were to put you in front of something right now, a radio or one of those, and you were to feel out what's being projected out by the mainstream media, as far as masculinity and femininity goes, besides it like just not being something you'd be interested in participating in. As you see that when talking to people, there is a, a great opportunity for this is, I, I look at this as it's such an amazing, powerful time because the light is being, sh and all of that is being projected out for us to pay attention to it. One, work with ourselves as we're triggered with it, if that's the case, right? Right. The energy, because it is triggering things. And being able to work at wow, or like where where does that affect me? And and releasing those old patterns and ties, right? Mm -hmm. But also, it's truly coming up for it to be balanced out and healed. So, as an individual, how do we start with ourselves? How do we disconnect him from that and not participate in it, but still balance out the masculine, feminine? by raising our consciousness? Well, I mean, you know, you got to look at the things you can, can and cannot control, first of all. Most of this stuff um, around the world that's coming out, like um, the men wanting to stay in power and control and the women wanting to be respected and um, seen as equal, there's a lot of struggle going on with that right now. And I mean, if, if you feel guided to have a voice in some of that, um, feel free, but much of it I see is beyond my control. There's much bigger things going on. So the best work I can do is balance those energies within myself and take care of my own space. And then this will be an example uh, for others. I mean, if you put people like this, scatter them all over um, that are doing the work, it's just going to be a great example, right? And that's what things will eventually become then. Um, it's all going to anyway. We just have to be patient while it all plays out. Um, yeah. It's coming up, like you said, for a reason, to be all exposed now and brought into the light um, so that the truth comes out and, and then people can decide whether or not they want to be a part of that anymore, right? It's Most yeah. of it's very unpleasant energies. Yeah. And uh, you just don't, it's not a choice I would make to be a part of those things anymore. Because there's much better ways, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it's not something that we participate in really, and also what you can notice if if maybe energy work is new to you or you're working on understanding masculinity and femininity more. Pay attention to where you're feeling that or where you're getting a rise is being inside of you and and go in and like work with that right roger yeah what's being triggered you mean you got anger or something mm -hmm. coming up uh, you want revenge or 
Uh, you just want to change things, find out why it is. Um, you believe things have to be in a specific way to be right or, um, you know, the, we can learn a lot about ourselves and the way we see things, but there's, to me, there's a, a much bigger picture always. Um, it hasn't, it's not been very difficult for me to step outside of things because there's so many, you look at most things in life, you have no control over them, um, except yourself and what kind of space you uh, create within you, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of space, yeah, you allow within you, I guess. And that's that's the, where all your power lies. So, so, so what would be some good homework for you? You know, one of the things that comes up for me is like in the past of how I viewed masculinity and femininity, like for, truthfully, right? What what that looked like to me, right? And it took me a little mm -hmm. while to actually go, oh wow, I really feel that way about either men or women, which is me by the way, you know, like, yes. and, and how that- Their qualities, that, right? The qualities, yes. yeah, and behaviors and like, um, just my idea of how things should look or be. And and I jotted those down and, and maybe like, that would be something people could do. Yeah, the only control yes. is how I react or respond to an experience. Mm -hmm. That's right, quench me. That's uh, exactly what we work toward. Yeah. That's where that's where all your power is. Again, it's within your choice and how you respond and what you align to within you. Um, that's where it's all at. So thank you. Yes, um, the list. I always like the list. Being aware, you know, taking inventory is always mm -hmm. it's good then, for everything. But. And then, Roger, if, if someone wants to share that list or even request, they can email you and we can send them. Uh, the list of the things that I read off earlier, right? Oh, like sure. Maybe they can do like a quick, quick little note check, right? There's actually, yes, there's longer, and there's yeah. probably lists of distorted views too. And I want to mention that it's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> often what we see, the feminine and masculine that we see expressed is quite distorted. So um, not everyone... Uh, like, for example, stereotyping uh, somebody for doing one thing and maybe from a distorted expression of that energy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we have to, we have to understand um, first what's um, healthier, yeah, healthy expression would be and then come from that place. Wouldn't reaction be a secondary... Well, yeah. yeah, reaction, it's usually what you do after something is triggered within you. And it could be a belief, could be stored emotion inside. Um, if somebody, like if you're a brunette, somebody tells you you're blonde, you're going to get whacked, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if somebody tells, judges you in some way or another, you may, depending on how stable you are, <clears throat> you may be... Um, uh triggered and then then this is where the choice comes up when we're triggered if we're feeling angry or something like this um that's the trigger and then we have the choice at that moment as soon as we're triggered whether or not we're going to react uh driven by that trigger or if we're going to hesitate like we go we stay in our heart space like connected to divine love or whatever as much as possible so uh, that then comes into that. We can allow it to be there. The energies will dissipate eventually within that love and light. And then we can be clear to choose how we're going to respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reaction is like an involuntary thing, almost like taking a breath. It's just what you, what you automatically do from all your programming. Yeah. So this is what usually gets people in, in to sticky situations like you you know, you spout something out that you regret later on. That's reactionary, uh, typically. And when we take the time to respond, yes, it's, uh, and, and if we're used to, uh, being with our heart, we'll respond from our heart mind, which is a, uh, very, it's a very beautiful place, actually. Um, there's love and consideration and all this kind of thing in there.
when we take the time uh, to respond also we uh, we get such a zoomed out broader perspective and we have created so much more choice than just say a or b or black or white right this reaction yes uh yeah somebody uh, say if you have strong religious or political beliefs and somebody whacks you right by saying something that's against uh yours allowing that to come up being in your heart you can step way back and then just see this is this is this person's opinion or their belief it has nothing to do with me they weren't uh hopefully they weren't attacking me personally um and if i'm in my heart i'm not going to take it personally anyway because we're carrying a you know holding a higher frequency there that um it's where our we determine what our worth and stances yeah it's not controlled by other people not at anyway. all so this is this is um you know this balance in the acceptance of masculine and feminine is very important and so important in relationship intimate relationship um and i see a lot of people that get in um, into relationships and just settle they may go in with disdain toward the other gender and just accept that that's the way it's going to be and uh, you know they may slough off the, their opinions or anything like this and it builds major walls so there's a lot of benefit as well as in opening up and to accepting the other person uh by beginning to work on our inner balance yeah. um and, and duality and through our traumas and all yes and sometimes we don't even realize that we have that uh, until we start doing the energy work or going inside and and actually understanding where those those little parts of us are hidden right yeah i mean uh, we kind of take those things for granted as that's just the way they are sometimes they're fully hidden um i recently had a experience with someone in energy sessions that had been doing uh, different kinds of work for a while and it was quite some time after uh, that they realized that, that there was disdain there and all the ways it was affecting the relationship right there was even no awareness of it um before but we can just uh these things uh, the way we see the opposite gender uh in all the discussion uh, you know with peers and all it just you accept it as that's the way they are and in order to have this you got to put up with all of it right yeah so those kinds of beliefs can be really deep seated and not even and not even in awareness so. that's right there um and if in my like in my experience where there was trauma early on there was a disassociation right from mm -hmm. not only the trauma but also the disdain towards a, in my particular case not being able to be protected um like by my mother, right? So there was a disdain towards femininity um and the disdain towards masculinity. But there it was so pushed down that I I I didn't even realize it in my behaviors growing up or into my early 20s, right? Until I actually yeah. started diving in and wanting to know myself and and understanding what those patterns were. I mean, for goodness sake, I I threw a stiletto at your face. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, like, this was during an energy session, yeah. by the way. I just yeah. I was uh working an energy session that Margie was in. We may have been both working it, but I just opened the session and a high-heeled shoe energetically came flying at me. Yeah. And I found out later it was Margie, she had some anger toward the masculine that day. A little bit, just a little bit. Which is yeah, real cool. So, going back into this stuff, <clears throat> um we don't we don't even know what's back you know what real is we become uh, we can become so distorted at such an early age that we don't know what the balance is anymore we may we may experience it um as a child um of course we're going to have a little more of one or the other depending on which gender is typically the case yeah. all right but um 
uh, we just forget. So we're living our lives in a place that is not real or true uh, to the way things are, and we're not even aware of it. So a lot of a lot of the um, and this this is so common in people in recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went years before that stuff started working out in me, and a lot of it I had to I began the energy work when a lot of it started. Uh, balancing out the balancing or the working with divine masculine and feminine uh, was one of the most powerful modalities for me Uh, just because in part the love first of all uh, Mm -hmm. of the feminine that I was blocking all of that and uh, from within myself right Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it also not only helps us balance out ourselves personally or for me I should say but it 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 definitely came out in my physical body, right? Um, And in my heart, but also a deeper, deeper connection to the natural world around us Mm -hmm. and to everyone in my life, right? Yeah, I guess that's what the natural world is made up of. So the more you're aligned within, the more you're gonna be able to experience directly what's actually happening and what people are expressing, right? I mean, there's a lot of very loving people that are just aligned to love. That's like their natural state. It's like they came here and remembered everything. I don't know how that happens. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. It took took some of us uh, had to go down some pretty dusty trails and windy trails to find our way back to um, our source energy. But... um, so you can begin again to experience those energies if you're shutting them down within you. You're not going to feel them from without either. Yeah. Uh, you know when people <clears throat> uh, in any kind of relationship, if those things are expressed, you just won't pick them up. You may understand things mentally, but um, uh, you won't be in for the full experience. Nice. Which is where the cool. That's the cool part. <laughs> It doesn't even it doesn't even have to be with just um, intimate personal relationships that could be in in anything people you work with right right there's a uh, with your kids with with everyone and everything everyone, animals everything. yes yeah. pets anyone you interact with it has mm-hmm. it's definitely not limited to um, intimate relationships. And sometimes even like coworkers are more important. I spend more time with coworkers than they spend with their spouses. You know, we're sitting close together all day long. So we go through a lot of this stuff as well and um, have opened up a lot of things uh, there with the talk. Um, uh, It's become much more safe to express there all the things. So we share a lot and... um, that that's intimacy as well, right? That is, you know, yeah. I mean, you know that I've, I've shared that with you about clients. For me, some people I might see, I'm talking to them one on one, and maybe I'll see them four times a week for an hour. That's a that's a lot of quality personal time, right? Yes. That they may not have when they get home. They may be making dinner with the kids, doing this, doing that. Like someone's watching TV while somebody else is getting something ready. And so they don't have that. They may spend a lot of time together, but it's not that connection. And there's a, there's some really powerful stuff that can happen when we're balanced out and just holding those, like that balanced energy in our space and what that mirrors. to. That may may be a good challenge for some couples, you know, Mm -hmm. to spend an hour together in full attention of the other person and see what happens. Yeah. Some no don't have phones. the time to do that. Yeah. No cell yeah. phones, just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Can be interesting and bring up. <laughs> can bring up a lot of stuff. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> well, good. No, uh, anybody else, any other input? Questions? No, I think we're good i want to thank you all for sharing so much today and and commenting and if any of you want a list of some of those qualities and come up with some of your own when you do your inventory whether you want to share or not we could put something together and maybe we can get andrea to do something that she was talking about in her writing yeah 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 i'd really like to see the 12 different uh masculine and feminine 
That would be really cool. So um, if we're about to close, mm -hmm. yes, you can email me at roger at recoveryourheart.com if you have any questions. Or I also, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, I also offer a free 30-minute uh, consultation if you want to talk about uh, trying out energy work, perhaps. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, you can follow me at Recover Your Heart on Facebook. I do some, I've been doing some uh, short spiritual, inspirational, like poetry almost, but very brief. I post those all on Facebook. Um, also have uh, facilitate local sacred self healing meetings where we listen to a couple of recorded meditations uh, that two of my teachers developed about overcoming ego and its addictions. Those are in St. Petersburg. First and third Fridays, typically of each month. There's one this Friday at seven o'clock. Um, what else? Recoveryourheart.com is my website. And that's probably Roger.RecoveryourHeart. Twitter, I post, or um, Instagram, sorry. <laughs> I post the writings there typically too and the announcements for the, um, for these lives. Mm -hmm. And the, these lives also go on, if any friends would like to see them missed out, they go on Basmati Space Words .com YouTube channel. I post those links there after they put up after a few days on my Facebook page as well. So, um, uh, thank you, Basmati, thank, for the platform. Thank you, Margie. Um, always a pleasure and fun. Thank you, everybody, for participating. And I hope the rest of your day, night, goes well. Andrea is so excited that you're going to do that. That's fantastic. We'll have to re-go into masculine femininity after we get that, right, Roger? Maybe we can do yes, it cool. three of us. Yeah, cool stuff. And everyone, happy Transformation Tuesday. Looking forward to the full moon coming up. Should be a good Well, that's day. just in a few days, huh? Yep, it's in Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm getting crazy. Yeah, I'm to get crazy. <laughs> Um, Roger, thank you so much for being here and taking the time. And I, again, I look forward to next week. Me too. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Thank you so much.